Ms. Marvel Episode 2 proved this show really just rocks and offered up more Marvel Easter eggs with a villain tease to match. BD here, and in this video I'm going to run through a few Miss Marvel Episode 2 Easter eggs, give you my complete Episode 2 reaction at the end of this video, and that means spoilers follow, and you've been warned, and now we're jumping in. I could spend this video telling you how Episode 2 of Miss Marvel had a reference to Black Widow and Hawkeye on Vormir when Bruno was told to let Kamala go just like the Avengers did with each other in Avengers Endgame. I could tell you that calling Kamala's powers hard light is a reference to X-Men comics where the Danger Room used hard light technology. We could debate whether those were Stark drones chasing Kamala under the control of damage control or discuss the straight up Black Widow pose Kamala nailed when she landed as a superhero. I mean, it would be fun to talk about Kingo from Eternals being name dropped and the whole lineage of Kingo as his own father and grandfather was on display during a conversation about Bollywood films and how that conversation is just like how Kamala and Cameron bonded on the pages of Miss Marvel Comics. I can even talk about how Cameron and his mother are part of a group called New Human in those comics and are actually enemies to Kamala on the pages and might be in the show. But instead, I want to talk about an Easter egg from episode one with a shout out to TikTok and Twitter user at WatchWithNeebs, who has been putting together great Easter egg lists for Miss Marvel and his theory about her costume popped into my feed, so I'm bringing it to yours. The Miss Marvel symbol was originally worn by Carol Danvers in comics, but it might take on a whole new meaning in the MCU, seeing as Carol never wore it here, so it might actually be a part of Kamala's name. In the first episode, Zoe compliments Kamala's necklace, which is Kamala's name written in Arabic. On the right side, you can see what looks to be very similar to the logo on Miss Marvel's costume. Considering you read from right to left in Arabic, this would be the first letter of Kamala's name. What better way to become a superhero than to embrace her culture and heritage by putting the first letter of her name in Arabic on the costume? Think about it. The first episode also saw Bruno Corelli telling Kamala that her cosplay was supposed to have something about herself involved in it and suggested something Pakistani. Now she really has an opportunity to put this part of herself on the Miss Marvel costume and I hope this theory turns out to be true. Shout out to At Watch with Neebs for putting this into my feed. Reaction time. Miss Marvel is just a flat out very good show. Episode 2 felt like a great way to conclude the first act one third of the way through the series. Kamala's family dynamic continues to be a great element of the series and her relationship with Bruno, paired with how well Iman Vellani and Matt Lynn's acts together is super fun to follow. Kamala is gaining more confidence, learning lessons the hard way about superheroing, like when she almost failed that young boy, and the damage control story is interesting and is a nice way to tie it all to the larger MCU without ever taking any focus away from this being Kamala's story taking place in Jersey City. Episode 2 did get me way more invested than Episode 1. I love rooting for Kamala Khan, and I do hope to see a clear-cut villain start to emerge like the new human group we mentioned earlier through episode 3 and beyond, but so far the pace is really good, the coming of age details are really well executed, the acting is super fun, the cultural representation is organic and honestly feels educational, and I'm overall just a really big fan of this series so far. Can't wait to see more. What did you think of Miss Marvel Episode 2? Share your thoughts in the comment section or send them my way on Twitter at Brandon Davis BD. And be sure to subscribe to our Phase Zero YouTube channel for more updates, exclusive interviews, and weekly conversations on our live show every Wednesday. 